Audi TT Mark 1 using OBD to scan your car for error codes. Hi all, Andy here and welcome back to the channel. How many of you are at home, you've got an engine management light on, on the car, and you think, damn, I'm gonna have to take this to the garage. Well, actually, you don't. If you own one of these, which is an OBD dongle, you can find out exactly what's wrong with your car at home. So today's video is going to be a beginner's guide to reading error codes on the car with an OBD dongle. You may have seen from some of my other videos that I have recently had an error code on the 3.2 V6. If not, then please check out the video link above. I was able to quickly diagnose the problem with the car thanks to this. When I took our Kia to a local garage recently for an MOT, it had an engine management light on and they wanted 50 pounds, yes, 50 pounds, just to plug in their code reader and tell me what the problem was. So for around 12 pounds, you can read these codes at home yourself, find out what the problem is and fix it a lot cheaper. So let's get started and I'll show you where this goes. So what is an OBD dongle and what does it do? The OBD dongle is essentially an interface that plugs into your car's diagnostic port that allows the various errors to be read out and analyzed for problems. This particular dongle has Bluetooth connectivity, so you can actually pair it with your phone and use an app for ease of use. Some of them come with a cable and screen built in, such as this example here. It is a sort of all-in-one for reading these codes. My Bluetooth dongle was £12 from Amazon, and the all-in-one readers tend to start at around £30. They tend to be rather universal also, so I diagnosed problems on my Kia and my Ford recently, as well as the Audi. So you have a suspected fault on the car. This could be an engine management light or something misbehaving that is not showing an error. What do you do? First thing is to locate your diagnostic port. On the TT, it is just below the lower dashboard towards the driver's door. It is shaped like this and is angled slightly up from the horizontal. So don't try ramming it in flat, it won't go. There is obviously a right way and a wrong way up due to the shape of the plug so make sure it's lined up right. The dongle's plugged into the diagnostic port. So the next job for me is to open the app on my phone. The app I use is called Car Scanner. I now click on the connect option to connect the ODB dongle to the app. It's connected via Bluetooth. Once it's connected, I then click the diagnostic trouble codes and that will give me all of the options I need for checking the car. I'm going to check OBD. Now I click on read, the app will run, and there we go, straight away, it comes back with a code. So I know I can take that code and investigate it, find out what's causing the problem, and get the car fixed. Now once the app has displayed your error, in my case, P1177, you can click on the code in Car Scanner, and it will take you off to a car error code site that describes what the error code means, the possible causes, the possible solutions, and even an estimated labour hours time to fix it. Sometimes there is more than one possible cause, but this does provide you with the tools you may need to tackle the various fixings yourself. This code that has popped up on the 3.2 is telling me there is a potential problem with the MAF sensor, or the O2 sensor, or even a VAC hose leak. So a few things I can check visually, but the car has previously thrown a different error suggesting that the Bank 1 Lambda sensor was faulty, so I'm leaning towards that O2 sensor being the problem. For now, I'm going to click the delete option to clear the code and see if it comes straight back. If it does, then I potentially do have a problem. If not, it could be just an intermittent fault that takes a while to manifest. I'm going to pick up a new lambda sensor and a new math as I think they are good things to have in stock for the future, as well as potentially quick wins to solve this problem. So to clear, I simply click the trash can or clear option. I can then rerun the scan and see if the error code returns. Luckily, on this occasion it doesn't and shows no DTC error codes are found. It really is as simple as that. Last week while filming an episode of TT Meets TT, the owner of the vehicle said to me he had an engine management light on. I said, well I've got the dongle with me, let's plug it in and take a look. Now, if you want to look at that episode on that particular vehicle of TT Meets TT, then it will be coming to the channel next week and I will leave a link to it above. So I popped the dongle into the diagnostic port, opened up the app on my phone, took a look, scanned the car, and hey presto, we came back, there was a problem with the Lambda sensor. 
So my £12 dongle has actually saved not only me going to the garage, but also one of the subscribers. It also saves a hefty garage bill. So that's pretty much it. And I would say if you're doing any maintenance at home on your Audi TT, then one of these dongles is an absolute must for your toolbox. In fact, if you're taking the car out anywhere, I would keep it in the glove box. That way, no matter where you are, if you're out in the car and an engine management light pops up on the dashboard, you can scan the car and find out the problem. One of the great features of these apps are they not only read the codes, but you can also click delete to clear the codes. That way, all old error codes will be removed from the system. So if you like what you've seen today and you found this video useful, then please do think about giving it a thumbs up and also think about subscribing to my channel if you've not already done so. Here you'll find a whole list of Audi TT Mark I maintenance videos and other projects I have underway on the Audi TT. As always, thanks for watching and see you soon. Take care.